is cybersecurity the best career option for you? I know a majority of you guys on this channel are interested in cybersecurity careers and I've been getting a lot of comments on asking whether or not you should choose between a cybersecurity career versus a software engineering career versus a data science career or even something outside of tech completely. So I did come up with a list of things to help determine whether or not cybersecurity is a good career option for you based on what I've seen the field is like from my experience working as a security analyst. The first thing to ask yourself when you're deciding whether or not you want to go into cybersecurity is how do you deal with the unexpected? For example, this could be cybersecurity incidents, this could be some kind of attack or some kind of malware, this could be a sudden request from your CISO based, based on different trends or, or ongoing attacks in the field. This could also be not knowing when the next alert or pop-up or, or anomaly is going to show up and you may have to spend your whole day focusing on that specific emergency or fire drill. Now it sounds like I'm trying to really not sell cybersecurity here but that's definitely not the case. I've heard think cybersecurity is one of the best and most interesting fields in tech to work in but it also happens to have certain aspects of it that you really need to think about before jumping in and focusing all your energy on a cybersecurity degree or cybersecurity boot camp and then realizing that it may not be the best fit for you now of course there are people out there who hear anomalies and hear that there's going to be unexpected bells and whistles going off and incidents being spun up every other day of the week and they may get really excited about that personally i am not one of those people i would say i am about moderate to low Low in terms of my excitement for unexpected events but this question is more so to think about how you react to unexpected events and not necessarily how much you like them so if you think about it for a typical role in tech maybe as a software engineer if you ship out a piece of code that has some kind of bug in it then maybe there might be a p0 or p1 and you have to go in and fix it there typically aren't going to be too many consequences with it there may be some low to moderate level of consequence for that mistake and for each change that you commit or push you probably aren't changing the entire code base for the application or if you are i hope that you had to thoroughly tested it have someone review your code but in cybersecurity there may be times when you make mistakes and there may be events spun up from that but a lot of times events are from things out of your control for example if a user clicks on a malicious link in an email or if someone gets a phishing call and, and they give someone their account information now you're working on the incident or maybe there's something going on in cybersecurity news and some nation state is attacking one of the other companies in your field and your company has an emergency fire drill to see what you can do to prevent this attack happening at your company so all these unexpected events can happen at any time whether it's during your workday at 10 a.m in the morning or even 10 o'clock at night and i'm not saying this is always going to be the case there are definitely going to be teams that don't get involved in incident response there's definitely going to be teams that don't have on-call hours or a company isn't often targeted by certain attackers but when an incident or some kind of unexpected event does inevitably happen and if you work in cybersecurity i guarantee you there's some kind of incident even if it's small to medium size that is going to occur and you're going to have to help work through it but of course that is another great learning experience and by the way my first course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity is actually live right now and is available in the link in my description i'm so excited for you guys to see it and it basically has all the tips that i use to get my first job in cybersecurity as well as my current job in cybersecurity it covers everything from resumes to cover letters to the actual job application process as well as all of my cybersecurity digital career resources this has been in the making for the last four to five months so i'm so excited to get this to you guys and hear your feedback on the course so if you're interested you can check out the link in my description below all right the second question on this list to ask yourself is are you willing to get certified and potentially not just one certification but multiple certifications so i would say cybersecurity is definitely one of the most certified or certification focused career fields in tech out there we're not even in tech but just in general because cybersecurity also kind of goes hand in hand with the defense and government side of things some companies may not ask you only for certifications but they may also want you to have security clearances and neither of those are going to be quick and easy kind of like take the exam pass it get your certification in one month and pass it and start the job and while i don't think that it's necessarily required to have a certification to get that first job in cybersecurity or even your second or third job in cybersecurity i do think it's one of those important stepping stones that you might need to help move your career forward for example when i first started in cybersecurity i didn't have a well-known cybersecurity certification but my university did have a computer security and digital forensics certification and i did take a few network security as well as digital forensics courses 
to get that certification, but it was under my degree program. So it was kind of like an additional plus one to my bachelor's degree. And that was enough to help me through and get that first job in cybersecurity. But after about a year of working in the field, I started studying for my security plus, which is, which is the primary entry level early career certification that I went for. And I really do think that the security plus played a huge role in helping me get my second job in cybersecurity. Because nowadays, especially when there's so many different avenues to get into cybersecurity, whether you have your associate's degree or your bachelor's degree or a boot camp or if you're self-taught even having a general well-known cybersecurity certification like the security plus if you're entry level really does just set the bar for okay so this person has their security plus and this is probably the amount of knowledge that they know and it kind of helps the employer figure out what level you're at in terms of your experience as well as your knowledge level and as you continue down your career if you decide to go into a more niche area or become a subject matter expert in a specific realm of cybersecurity then you may be expected to get a certification in that in that area as well or even a master's degree i'm sure there are people in cybersecurity who've worked for 25 30 years and have never gotten one certification but nowadays i think to stay competitive and also be able to negotiate better terms and salaries for your future jobs it really does help to have that certification back you up even if it's just there on your resume as kind of like a check off the box thing and of course it's an awesome learning experience it kind of fills the gaps of the areas of cybersecurity that you don't know for example if you're in your mid-career and you're taking the cissp then there may be areas on the cissp that you haven't touched before even if you're 5 10 or 15 years into your career and it kind of just helps you become more well-rounded and also more valuable to employers so when you're considering getting into a role in cybersecurity definitely consider these types of certifications that you may be able to get or want to get in the future and also consider whether or not you even want to get certifications because if you go into software engineering for example you probably aren't going to be expected to have a software engineering certification i don't think there's anything like that to be honest or at least none that are really industry standards like the security plus or the cissp or the ceh Cybersecurity is definitely unique where our employers generally do look for those certifications on your resume. The nice thing to think about is how deep do you enjoy getting down into problems? Do you like being deep in the weeds or do you prefer being high level? And for either of those answers and anywhere in between, there are definitely roles in cybersecurity that have focuses on deep in the weeds technical work in cybersecurity, like digging through anomalies and logs and things like that versus high level things where you may be where you may be planning different cybersecurity projects or implementing slash improving certain processes in cybersecurity for the cybersecurity team. The question is really about how deep do you want to dig? And that'll help you decide what role do you want to go into in cybersecurity. For example, a security engineer is probably going to be a lot more deep in the weeds compared to a security analyst who are typically going to be a bit more entry level and may not have as much technical experience or technical foundations compared to a security engineer who may also know more about the cybersecurity aspects of an application. Another thing to consider is do you enjoy working with people or other teams? Now, of course, there are going to be roles in cybersecurity that have more people facing objectives versus teams that are more so heads down maybe you're on the red team maybe you're doing security assessments as well as the roles that are in between i do think that contrary to my original beliefs when i got into cybersecurity was that i originally thought that cybersecurity was much more heads down especially when i was comparing it to my previous experience doing software engineering where you are given a story for your sprint and you worked on it for a week or two and then you present it to the team and then you work on the next story and it kind of like goes in a cycle the only touch points are your daily stand-ups but but my team previously didn't have daily stand-ups we had it every other day so i would say that touch bases with your stakeholders with your team are a lot more hands-off as a software engineer compared to a security analyst where where you may be dealing with stakeholders on a regular basis for many different things for example in some places you may be the customer or you're sending out a request to a team for some kind of cybersecurity incident or initiative and on the other side someone else may be the customer where you're providing some kind of cybersecurity expertise or you're doing some kind of cybersecurity consulting or answering certain security questions for an external stakeholder. So you're definitely not going to be on meetings every single day unless you're at the management level, which you probably will be sitting in meetings a lot, but it's probably going to be the case for most roles in tech and across the board but just thinking about how much interaction that you want to have with different people if you're on the blue team for example you may be writing reports for executives once a week once a month sharing the overall security posture of the company you may have to actually present that information on a monthly call or a weekly call on the red team after your security assessment or your pen test you're typically going to have some kind of report that you provide to the customer or the client at the end and you're probably also going to have to explain it to them explain it to their technical teams their dev teams your security teams 
emotions so that they understand the vulnerabilities that you found and also the remediations for them so that they're able to make those fixes and changes and then once those are ready they'll come back to you and then you validate that they're completed and then if you're on the auditing slash compliance side you're definitely going to be talking to many people revealing their application or their servers or whatever technical assets that they have and checking to see if they're in compliance with certain certifications or general standards across the board, depending on the sector that you're in. Finance and healthcare are definitely are the ones that stand out that have the most compliance standards as well as of course, government agencies and defense contractors. So while these all have varying levels of touch bases with customers and different teams and stakeholders in general, it's actually really surprising to find out that cybersecurity actually does have a good amount of, does have a good amount of human to human interaction that you wouldn't originally think of when you're first starting out in cybersecurity and especially because all the movies are portraying hackers like like people in hoodies who are just behind a screen locked in an IT closet somewhere and just typing away for eight hours a day. That is not going to be the case usually but of course every company may do things differently and and you may have more heads down time compared to other companies that, that may have you interfacing with customers and clients more often. The next thing is how much do you enjoy keeping up with the latest news or the latest trends in cybersecurity. This is definitely a good way to gauge how often that you want to keep up with cybersecurity. And again, you don't have to be reading cybersecurity news every single day. Obviously, that would be helpful if you're able to spot something that may affect your company or may impact some kind of vendor or some kind of tool that your company is using. But it's really just something to keep in the back of your mind. It's definitely not like a it's definitely not like a huge red flag if you don't enjoy doing those things, but it's definitely going to be beneficial for your career. If you're someone who naturally is interested in, hey, what's going on in cybersecurity? What's going on with the news what are the latest attacks what are the latest what are the latest vulnerabilities that attackers are taking advantage of what are the big nation states that are on the move at the moment what companies recently had big cybersecurity breaches sometimes i can definitely feel like information overload because of the amount of cybersecurity news that's generated on a regular basis it kind of can be hard to turn off that switch sometimes, which is why you should definitely find some kind of happy medium for you. Or maybe you check the news every other day or every other other day. Or maybe you only check for about 20 minutes a day from your top security news sources that you use and you stop there because sometimes it can really be kind of like an endless black hole. So I'm not saying that you have to enjoy keeping up with trends and news as often as possible. And every time a new article comes out, you have to read it in the first five minutes. But I do think to some extent it can be helpful because interviewers are also going to ask you things like, oh, so how do you keep up with current events in cybersecurity? How do you keep up with the latest attacks? How do you keep up with the latest tools and technologies in cybersecurity? And these are really common questions to be asked in cybersecurity interviews. And it's just really helpful to know that someone is interested in in the field to be able to keep up with it especially when it can potentially be relevant to the job that you're doing and the applications and people that you're protecting the last thing i wanted to discuss is work flexibility and and on call so just to start off i do think that i've been really lucky but i have not had any on call hours in my last almost four years working as a security analyst in two different companies so of course i can't speak from experience for on call hours but i do have coworkers who have told me about their on call experiences and it can definitely be a little bit rough especially when you're brand new to the team and you're doing your first on call your first few and maybe you get your first incident and it's definitely not that only cybersecurity has on call hours there are definitely other roles in tech that also have them even software engineering teams have on call hours depending on the team that you're on but it's definitely something to keep in mind because if an incident does happen while you're on call it can definitely cause a lot of stress especially if it's happening at 3 4 a.m in the morning and it's one of your first experiences. Now, outside of on-call hours, I do think that cybersecurity in general does have pretty good flexibility in terms of work-life balance and being able to revolve your work depending on the hours that you, depending on the hours that you work. But again, I can only speak from my personal experience, so this will heavily depend on the company and the team culture that you have. But I found that working in cybersecurity does provide me a lot of flexibility. For example, I'm currently working remotely for my full-time job and I am permanently remote. But of course, there are other cybersecurity roles that may be fully in person or hybrid. I do think across the board that that tech careers typically are going to have more flexibility in terms of being able to work remote compared to other in-office jobs or jobs that may require you to be in a specific place at a certain time. So I do think this is definitely one of the big perks of being able to work in cybersecurity and having more flexibility with the location and the time in which you have to do your job. And especially in cybersecurity, where some teams have a follow the sun model, where there's always a team, at least one team member, who is in a different region that is able to follow the sun and keep up with different security events. And that in general can really help with on-call, by the way, where you may not have to work overnight. If someone is working in the EMEA region, if you're an international team with someone else working in a different region and a different time zone. 
which is also something that cybersecurity teams do invest in because of the fact that there's more coverage over the 24 hour span of a day. All right, so hopefully all of these questions and topics kind of gave you guys an idea of what to expect if you worked in cybersecurity and hopefully also helped you decide whether or not you think cybersecurity is a good role for you. Obviously cybersecurity isn't for everyone, but I do think it's one of the best roles out there, even in tech with pretty good work-life balance, good compensation and salaries, and a huge demand for cybersecurity professionals. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else that people should consider while they're deciding whether or not they want to go into cybersecurity as a full-time career. Let me know if you guys have any other questions in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you. If you want to check out my course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity, I would really greatly appreciate it. And that is also linked in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.